it's improving. Yeah, it's still colored and hurts when I bend it, but you know, woo! <laughs> all righty, so you guys all excited about your first exam? I finished writing it this morning. <laughs> You're like, so? <laughs> uh, uh, let's see, show of hands. Will this be your first exam this semester? Yeah, it's, I'm generally f sooner. <coughs> Two reasons. Uh, one, I never liked the courses that only had like one or two exams, or even three, because then it was too much stress. It's like if I flunk one, I, I like drop three letter grades or something, or fail the whole course. So I don't want to do that. Let's see, you'll have a total of five, counting the final. So yeah, if you bomb one, it won't be as big a deal. So. Second, uh, I, it was always tough. Classes, they always seemed, by the time you could withdraw, you hadn't had your exam yet, so you really didn't know where you, how you were doing. Well, hey, here you go. You'll know, you know, Tuesday-ish. <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell you now uh, that the exam, if you show up and take the exam, then you have an opportunity to make it up. Uh, in other words, you'll come Monday, you'll take the exam like normal, but as soon as uh, class, or like 1 o'clock, then on WebAssign, the, there's an assignment of the exact same exam. And I do that for a couple reasons. Uh, one, you can go on and make up points, because a lot of people think they bombed the test, and like, oh, I don't know, how did I do? I failed, I did terrible. Well, who doesn't like makeup exams where you can get at least half your points back? That's why I do it. From the teacher perspective, I like it because by you doing that, I, it, it, well, at least it doesn't ensure, but it encourages you to uh, learn the material because it's at home, an open book, with or without friends. <laughs> you all have to turn it in individually, of course, but that way you can learn what the answers are. One warning on the makeup exam that will be available on WebAssign, you only get one submission. You don't get to keep guessing, like on homework. Repeat that, because you only get one submission. You can't guess. So in theory, you can look up, learn the answer, be sure, submit it. So if you take the exam here, you're allowed to make that up. Because I always get students that complete the makeup exam that were never here to take the exam in the first place. Uh, they get nothing. If you choose to make up the exam, you don't have to. If you take the WebAssign makeup exam and do anything, even if you only submit one answer, then that means you're committed, you're going to do it. What I do is I take the uh, average of the, of the two. So I don't know, if, you, if you do terrible in class, and then with the answers, generally, I think I've only had one person ever do worse. <laughs> they must have just been guessing. Then you take it online. In theory, you can get 100. And so if you miss this many points, you'll get, make up half of those. Fairly easy to make up half of what you miss from exam. I th as a student, I think I'd really like that. So. And I like it from the teacher. So, okay, uh, it'll be on, available on WebAssign. I think I made it show up at one o'clock Monday, which is I'm getting there. <laughs> so that's when you see it. And once you see it, it has the due date to remind you. And I made uh, four, 48 hours, so two days. So it'll be due right after the Wednesday lecture. Yeah, one piece of paper. You can write front and back if you want. It's fine with me. Any other questions or concerns about the exam? Okay. All right, well, let's review. <laughs> I'll open it to you guys first. Uh, hopefully you reviewed a little. 
Any concerns, questions about the homework, the reading, my lectures, whatnot, before I get into just a boring review <laughs> rundown? Yes, it's in the, uh, if you're wondering, in chapter 5, folks, and I guess it's the beginning-ish. And, yeah, Ron, it was actually you that asked this question earlier, is well, how I th- uh, why I think this is important, your question. Um, this Newton's third law, all forces come in pairs, and there's an action-reaction, but if there's two forces acting on something and they're opposite each other, why doesn't the object move? You asked something similar to that several lectures ago. It doesn't move because the guy pulling is not part of the system. Right. But I don't understand. That's the idea. So for those that want to reference this, this is page 2069. Okay, so got a peach and an apple. And in this one, they drew the system around there. He, he's pulling the, I guess it's an orange, whatever. <laughs> so in this case, the force on the orange, here, orange, apple is provided by the apple. The apple's pulling the orange. But it's Newton's third law, and so if the apple's pulling on the orange, the orange pulls back on the apple. But it says, they are not canceled by the reaction force on the apple. The orange still accelerates, in this case. Because, yeah, you know, if the apple pulls on the orange, the orange is going to move. The reaction is the orange pulls back on the apple. Well, that's going to affect the apple's motion, not the orange's. Our system right now, we're looking at the orange. In physics, this is kind of like the technical proper way to think of this in terms of systems, where I've always kind of worded it as, what object are you dealing with? That's your system. In this case, it's just the orange. And I think it makes sense. He's going to start rolling, right? If, you pull, if the apple pulls hard enough. Okay, that's the easy case. Then they draw a second one, where instead now the system is around both. Like that. And it says, in the larger system of the orange and the apple, action-reaction forces are internal. They're both with inside the system, and they cancel. So the system won't ever move. If these are the only horizontal forces with no external force, no acceleration of the system occurs. And that just means together, their motion doesn't change. That's all. Yeah, the apple still pulls on the orange. The orange is still pulling on the apple. That never goes away. But if you're considering both of them, it has no effect on their combined motion, if that's your system. It seems weird. That's an easier way would be, it's like you're, you're in your car. Let's see, driving along. Okay, you, 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 you stop. But you're inside your car. Push on the dashboard, and you can move your car forward, right? You can't? Have you tried it? (laughs) Yeah, you can't move your car by exerting a force inside the system. This is weird. To simplify, say this whole thing was on a platform that that could move. What they're doing would not move this platform. That's the idea, because if they're combined as a system, all those forces are internal, and you can't pull yourself up by your own bootstraps type of idea. So the pairs that you talked about, reaction, you still have those? Yeah, they're still there. Apple pulls on the orange, so the reaction is the orange pulls on the apple. 
what I think is an easier way is just saying, okay, if you're looking at the motion of the orange, look at only the forces on the orange. Not his reaction force on the apple. That affects the apple. So that's your system. You can go with its motion. But if you're looking at the motion of both of them, like on a cart, to put this in some type of context, now you have to look at the force of both. And in that case, they both cancel any effect, this, they would, any motion of the system, where it's both. Yeah. I was just wondering, when, when you talk about systems, is it just kind of a perspective way to look at it? It's perspective, and it's totally arbitrary. Okay. You can make a system whatever you want. Good example, yeah. Me, I'm repeating for the video. Yeah, standing on the scale. Well, is it just me and the earth? Or is it me with the, tab with the scale? Or is it me with the scale and the table? That's the idea. I just didn't explicitly say, now the system is. But just look at the forces on the objects in question and you'll be fine. Which is why I didn't go over this in detail. But I'm glad you asked. Does that make sense now? Any of you go on to further physics, you'll have to, you know, it'll help dealing with that. Can't help. Uh, who, who is? Show of hands. I know there's a couple of you. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, more than I thought at the beginning. So, yeah, that's useful for you guys more so than the rest of you. I, did, I'll, I won't lie, at the end of this class, you'll probably never see systems again. But, but it's, it's all perspective and makes things relative one way or another. Yeah. Newton's second law says in an isolated system, what can increase? Sorry, the, the second law of ther thermodynamics. Oh, thermodynamics. That the what can increase? I didn't hear. The, that the, uh, in an isolated system, entropy can only increase. Oh, entropy and thermodynamics. Yeah, it, systems definitely are more important in thermodynamics. And that's because you have heat being transferred in or out. And if it all stays internally, then this thing can't do any work externally. Or you can't change the heat from here. It won't increase or decrease the amount of energy inside unless something external inputs it in. Same idea. And in an entropy is even further. A lot of people sum it up as a measure of disorder, roughly accurate. And same idea, whether it increases or decreases, depends on what you include and not. Is that sufficient for now? Good. Yes? Yes. And your confusion is just what to do? <laughs> Pulling it up so I get it right. But yeah, you know, friendly reminder too, this, this is the first homework that's not due Sunday night. You realize that? I, I'm, I'm not having it due Sunday night because then you'll w spend all your time and energy up late at night finishing the homework instead of reviewing for the test the next day. So, yeah, it's due tonight. I think that's what I, yeah, that's right. So, don't assume homework's always due on Sunday nights forever. <laughs> it's not tonight. Was that in the one that's due tonight? Chapter 5. There it is. Number three, if you stand next to a wall on a frictionless skateboard and push the wall with a force of 38, well, the value changes. So many newtons, how hard does the wall push on you? Okay, let's say I push it 38 newtons. I'm building up to it for the rest to remember what it was. If I push it 38, what's it push? 38, good. So that's the force exerted on me. It's going to affect my motion. So the second part, if your mass is something, what's your acceleration? Well, what, what relationship, which law guides our thinking for how force, mass, and acceleration are related? Second law, which is F equals MA, that relationship. So that's how they're, they're related. 
Thus, this one asks for acceleration. So, the force the wall pushes on me divided by my mass. If something exerts a force on me to overcome my inertia and change my motion, that's how much it'll change. It, then there you go. So that's a, just plug them in. But see, this is a great example of, you, you don't just plug and chug in this class typically. You have to think and realize, oh, okay, if I push on the wall, the wall pushes on me, that's the force I need. And that's going to affect my mass. So then you can just, now that you know what you're doing. Does that help? Yes. Yeah, that's a student favorite. <laughs> the, the horse pulling the cart, yeah. Um, I think I got it, but so the P's are the cart and the horse. That's the tension between them. Yeah, the idea, I'm simplifying here. <laughs> there's the horse, there's the cart. <laughs> so the horse pulls on the cart. So we can have a force going that way. But Newton's third law says the cart pulls back on the horse. Whoop. Equal but opposite. Okay, but the only reason they can pull is because there's friction. The horse is pushing against the ground. He's uh, actually trying to push this way. You know, when you walk, you're pushing that way. Right? So friction's opposing that going the other way. So um, it pushes on the floor this way. You push back, and likewise over here you get those. And then you get all these arrows, and that was the point. It gets confusing. So in terms of systems, when the questions, okay, what does the cart do? Well, just look at the forces on the cart. Let's just take it. Here's the cart. Okay. The horse pulls it, right? That way. Yeah. And then uh, there's got friction holding it back. Yes, it pulls on the horse and it pushes on the floor, but those are affecting the horse and the floor. So in this case, if you were just worried about the motion of the cart, the cart's your system. These are the only horizontal forces acting on the cart. The horse trying to propel it forward and friction trying to hold it back. So its net effect, if this was, I forget the... Um, you know, P and F, and I don't want to, I'm worried I'm going to do it wrong. So let's just do this. <laughs> so the net effect is the force of the horse in the positive direction minus friction holding it back. Yep. Okay. Technically, all right. There's, yeah, there's tension in here, and tension's a force. So if you want to break it down even more, the rope is pulling on the cart. The horse is pulling on the rope. So if you just look at the rope, it's getting tugged that way, but the reaction is to tug back. And same on this end. It's getting tugged, so it tugs back. There's action-reaction pairs at each end to help you not get so muddled down. I just tried to simplify that the force this is getting pulled is the force it pulls back. They're opposite and equal. That is the tension. Yes, that's this. The horse pulls on the cart through the rope. So if you prefer, you can call this tension because it's the rope that's directly pulling the cart transferred through the rope. But it's the same force. So what's the force, or what's P P? That picture's too big, small. There's a big P and a little P, and I can't tell which is which. I think the big P is this. 
looks like that's the force on the, p- pulling the cart forward, whether you want to attribute that to the rope or the horse directly. Okay, let me try again. How many forces are pulling the cart that way? Well, no, Burton, now stop that. What's pulling the cart that way? The horse? Okay. So let's draw that. Force due to, to horse. Is anything else pulling it that way? Then we're done. That's all that's pulling it that way. What? Anything trying to pull it this way? Friction. So there you go. Those are the only forces on our system, our cart. So that's all that matters. No, we've already discussed air resistance. It wasn't mentioned in this, and carts go slow enough that it's negligible. Yeah, technically there'd be some air resistance, and if I drew it to scale for typical speeds of carts, here you go. There you go. <laughs> On the test, I will say whether or not you need to do the air resistance or not. And if you want to make sure, just ask me. I'll tell you. No, I'm not trying to trick you. <laughs> the second part is this. What's the net horizontal force on the cart? So yeah, it's the force pulling forward on it minus the for- friction back. Does, does it make sense now? Yeah, just like all the and Yeah, that... Did you, you can zoom in. I, I, I mean, I can work on making the picture bigger next time, but I figure if people are looking at it on their computer, they can... Mine I printed out so I didn't have to print 12 pages, but... But yeah, that was to emphasize this whole idea that it looks like lots of things are going on. There's always pairs, action and reaction pairs. But if you are, want to know the motion of an object, only look at the forces on that object okay. and ignore all those others for at least that time being. Good question. You're in a car, and you're the the engine and everything is exerting a force. And I'm going to break this down. On what? What's the engine actually causing to move? What's the engine of a car actually causing to move? The wheels. It's trying to make the wheels turn. And they're touching the ground. So I, I find it interesting that it's, if they push on the ground, the reaction is the ground pushes back on the car. It's that friction. That's the force on the car that actually propels it forward. So, yeah, your engine actually propels you fo- forward, but it's actually turning the wheels, which touch the ground, and the ground reacts and pushes back on you. And that's what propels you forward. Now, lest I confuse people, I have to pause a moment because this always gets it and I I wasn't going to cover it. A wheel. If it's rotating like this, people get confused because, wait a minute, I thought friction opposes your motion. And I'm drawing it forward? Hold on. (laughs) The wheel's trying to turn. And where it's in contact, it's going this way. The wheel's trying to move that way. Which means the ground is pushing back on you that way. So yeah, actually the frictional force is that way. Again, when you walk. Ice skating. My daughter's getting into it. It's like walking, but slowly. (laughs) Anyway, that's what propels you forward, the friction between the floor. If there was no friction in this world, see this whole point of this class is to be amazed. Yes, I'll get to your answer. Be amazed by the natural world around us. Stop and think what the world would be like if we had no friction. It's a good exercise. Think of all the things that would be different, that we take for granted. One, you couldn't walk. You just slip in place. Couldn't drive. How about a pencil? Yeah, think about that. So, we have a frictional force trying to actually propel us forward. But we have wind resistance 
trying to push us back. And as you said, you said it correctly. If these are equal, what's the acceleration? Zero, which means you're at a constant velocity. So yeah, a lot of people, 85 miles an hour again, right? People think, oh, I'm not doing diddly squat. Well, that's, actually, these are going on right then. You're just, they're just in mechanical equilibrium. No net force, no accelerations. Thus, you're not changing your motion. You're maintaining it. Inertia. See, we end up reviewing anyway. Yep? That was number four, for reference. The guy standing on the ground. Yeah, we did that a couple times in class, and it's in your book. If I'm standing on, on the table, okay, there's 180 pounds of force down. What's the reaction? Yeah, the question is, is it the, the ground or the table supporting me, or earth pulling on me? Yeah, it kind of depends on how it's worded, so let me read this. Consider the two forces acting on a person who stands still, namely the downward pull of gravity and the upward support of the floor. Okay, worded that way. The downward pull of gravity. What's pulling me down? The earth. So what's the reaction to that? If the earth's pulling me down, I'm pulling up on the earth. That's the action-reaction pair for the downward pull of gravity. Now there's another pair going on. That weight is pushing into the floor. So I push on the floor with 180 pounds. So the reaction is, it pushes up on me with 180 pounds of force. That's the normal force support. That's a pair. Two different pairs. Does that help? Without... Yeah, your weight is due to the gravitational so, pull. I mean, that is the force. My weight is 180 pounds, so they're the same thing. Okay, so when he says the downward force of gravity is dependent on the upward force of the ground, it makes sense to think that they're action reaction pairs. It does make sense, and that's why you're in my class. Now you know they're not the pair. Because what, what causes my weight is the earth. Yeah. So the reaction in the pair is that. Then think of it this way. We, I, th I tried it once. You jump out of a building. While you're in the air, do you have weight? Yes, good, thank you. Because <laughs> gravity's still acting on you. What's the reaction to that weight? Because you're not touching anything. Right, you pull on the earth. Think of it that way and it'll help you remember. That has to be the pair. Now, once you run into something, you push on it, so it pushes back. So that's when another pair comes into play. But that, when you push on something, that pair is still gravity and the reaction force. That's correct. It, they happen to be the same value when you're standing still, yes. So, I mean, Should I give you an example where they're not the same? Okay. Roller coaster rides, vomit comet. Elevators, we did that too. If you're accelerating because the elevator is trying to move you or the airplane or you're going over the top and you feel a little lighter, think of the scale you're on. It's going to change its value because the weight, or I should say, the force you exert on the surface changes depending on whether you're accelerating or not. So that action-reaction pair magnitude can be different than your weight if you're accelerating. So in that case, they are the same. But this is the pair, and this is the pair. They happen to be the same value, but the support force is not the reaction to the earth pulling you down. You have to keep the pairs separate. Other questions?
I don't want to make you feel bad. It is confusing a lot of, for a lot of people, so you're in good company. <laughs> Maybe another way is the Earth and the Moon. The gravitational attraction between them. That's the pair. It's easy to see. But if they collide into each other, well, now they're directly pushing on each other. And so there's a reaction to that also. Different pairs. Different causes. Well, it's not due yet, so I'm trying to avoid giving you it outright. <laughs> it asks, are, are these forces equal and opposite? And it asks, do they form an action-reaction pair? So do you think they're equal and opposite? Yeah, we just said that for the last five minutes. I hope so. Good. But are they a pair? Nope. There, if you just paid attention, you got both answers. <laughs> Yeah, it's not too bad. <laughs> okay. Well, let's let's see. Let's discuss everything. Well, the question asks: If you hit the nail, there's a force on it. It exerts a force on it, so the nail goes back. They should be equal and opposite. That's the pair. It hits the nail. The nail pushes back. But technically, there's other forces going on. This has a weight, mg. What's the reaction pair to that? That's the earth. The earth's pulling down on it, so it pulls up on the earth. Separate pair. Has nothing to do with the nail. And then likewise, the nail has a weight. Same idea. But for this question, we were just looking at the force between them because this is hitting it, so it hits back. So uh, there's you know three pairs really there, but we're focusing on one of them as the question. Yeah. Homework three? What number? Thank you. How do you get the second part? The defend your answer? Oh, okay. The question is, what two controls on a car cause a change in speed? Okay, so I'm going to back up. What speed? Good. A change in position or distance with time, right. And how does it differ from velocity? Velocity includes direction. So speed is magnitude only, a scalar. So how do we change the magnitude of how fast we're going? What could a car do? It could accelerate. That would speed you up. It could, it could decelerate. That would accelerate you in the opposite direction and slow you down. That would change speed, how fast you're going. I heard somebody say turn. Who said that? How, and how would that change your speed? And that's the point here. Yeah, just changing direction, that would change velocity, but not necessarily speed. You can do a turn at 85 miles an hour, even though I don't suggest it, and your speed hasn't changed. Your velocity did, but not your speed. Does that help? I apologize. I have a hard time understanding you. Can you speak clearly? My hands are with acceleration, and say it's wrong. So I tried to play the game as wrong. So on the defend your answer, all you wrote was acceleration? No, it's not defending. I was on the that is multiple choice you did there, and all these questions I tried. The first one was acceleration, and it's wrong. I tried the second one. Oh, oh, I think I understand. The first selection is accelerator, not acceleration. And this one said select all that apply. There's more than one answer, as we just discussed. So if you only put one, yeah, you get it wrong. No, I put two for each second part. The second part, you need only one. 
Okay, the second part of the question, we're, we're having a difficulty with communicating. The second part of the question is a... You, Oh, he means the third part of the question. Thank you. <laughs> yes, okay. An accelerator can change the speed as well as the velocity. Because if, if the speed changes, the velocity changes with it. Because velocity includes speed. So the, there's only one answer where you can only change velocity without changing speed. And that's the, with the direction. You can keep the speed the same by turning and, and still change velocity. I apologize for not understanding. That's good. It's a good distinction between those two. Where are we at? Uh, this demo has to do with this uh, reaction reaction stuff, so this might be a good time to try it. It's kind of fun. So this is a fan cart. We used it briefly before, showing constant acceleration when I drop those poker chips down. So if I turn on the fan, it blows air this way. So you can see it's blowing air that way. So if the fan blows air that way, the air pushes on the fan that way. That's why the fan moves that way. Okay. If the cart pushes air this way, let's give it a sail. If you blow on the sail now, what will happen? If I blow on the sail that way, what will happen? Yeah, it will move that way. Because the air is going to exert a force on the cart, making it move that way. What's the cart do? It pushes the air back. But that affects the air. So, yeah, it moves. So, now that you guys are ready, what happens when I turn the fan on? Which way will it go? So, it's, the fan is going to push on the air, and, and the air is going to blow into the sail. So it's kind of like the buggy cart thing. We've got multiple things going on here. If we want to look at the motion of the cart itself, let's look at just the forces on the cart. Okay. Fan on the air. Well, that affects the air. So we don't need that one. But the reaction is air on the fan. So that's going to be a force this way, causing the cart to move that way. All right. That air runs into the sail. That's connected to the cart, so that's going to affect its motion that way. The reaction is the sail back on the air, but that affects the air. So we got two forces. So let's turn it on. Yeah, and it just sits there. So there, there's two forces acting on the cart, but they're opposing each other. Mechanical equilibrium, no net force, no acceleration. But you remove the sail, and it can start moving. So you guys were prepared for this since we had this discussion. This usually confuses everybody up the wazoo when I show it the first time. Does that make sense? Good. See? Feel good. You're getting this. Yeah, why we're on a demo, and this is action reaction. Let's do this one. Because <laughs> it involves, you know, an explosion. So here's a two liter bottle. And I drilled a hole in the cap. I'm going to add some alcohol to it, hopefully. Squirt some in. A little more. So liquid alcohol does not ignite. But the vapor does. We've got to turn it into vapor. So I'm coating the inside and letting it evaporate. Whoop. We'll get some good alcohol vapor inside the bottle. 
it mixes with the oxygen. Now it's flammable. So I ignite it. I'll, I'll put a flame up by there. And what will happen? Now, that's right. Now explain the physics. All right, think of your explanation while we do it. It looks a little cooler in the dark, so let's see here. I'll dim them a little bit. <laughs> There's our rocket. All right, now the physics. Sudden expansion of particles with heat, good. Inside the bottle. So the, the pressure inside increases, and all those particles are forced out the hole. So that's a force of the bottle on the gas inside, shooting it out. What, what's the reaction? Very good. It's that ejected gas pushes back on the bottle and propels it forward. Now, the gas is really light. It doesn't have much mass. The bottle is relatively heavier. So which one's going to go faster? Yeah, the gas shooting out. Yeah. That's why it takes a lot of fuel to lift up the space shuttle. It's heavy. <laughs> that big explosion that looks really cool. But you do enough of it, and fast enough, you can get a, a thrust, a propulsion, and that propels the rocket. So again, to emphasize, the reaction force here is not, I repeat, is not the bottle pushing on the air in the room. It doesn't need it. And it is not, I repeat, not shooting it out and pushing against the wall, and the wall kicks it back. The bottle's not even touching the wall. No, it doesn't need the wall. I could light it midway, and it would still kick out the gas. The gas would push it. Until it runs out of fuel, then it has nothing to kick out. So, you know, next time you're uh, floating in a canoe and you dropped your paddle, you, c you could reach down and... But say you have an infinite amount of uh, bowling balls, right? If you chuck one out, what happens? You're going to react back. You push on the ball, so it pushes on you, and you'll propel forward a little. Remember our carts where they toss the ball back and forth? Well, then chuck another bowling ball. You'll keep going, right? Yeah, practical, right? Okay. Well, let's see. In our couple minutes remaining, any dying questions? I think your best review is, well, clearly, uh, check your understanding questions in the chapter. The homework. Look at, look at the answer keys. Um, but let's see if there's something major, I feel like. Don't forget about chapter one. Uh, basically, we, what we, we br what briefly went over scientific method, facts, theories, and a hypothesis. I would like you to know what those are. Um, bunch of balancing of forces. Terminal velocity. I, I think there's a question with air resistance and falling. Here, I'll just look at the exam, see. Well, yeah, I'm asking you to reason. You guys know a lot now, more than you realize. So, well, here's an example. You'll have to think again. Like It's like that one on the wall. If you push on the wall and you're so, you have so much mass, how's that going to affect your motion, your acceleration? That was that F equals MA thing. But you have to realize what the force is on you. If you're trying to climb up something, like a pole, why do you not fall? Yeah, friction quite often. So there's a friction force there holding you up, right? Countering your weight. 
And if you're not moving, let's say you just hold still on the pole, what do you know? Say again. Mechanical equilibrium, which implies what about the net force? Which implies what about the net acceleration? Which implies what about the velocity? It's not changing, whether you're, well, in that case, you were at rest, but you could have been moving at a constant speed. So yeah, constant velocity, no acceleration, no net force, mechanical equilibrium. Use those on the test. Read the questions carefully. If the thing's moving at a constant speed, boom, you already know it's, there's no acceleration, right? What's acceleration due to gravity? 9.8, yep. I'll tell you whether you need to know 9.8 or 10. It really won't matter which one you use on the test. And does that change? What if I throw something in the air? It, the, the acceleration due to gravity does not change. If you include air resistance, that can affect the net acceleration. And again, you just balance the upward and downward force. Yeah? I've kept all the, the units, I believe, in standard units. Things we've been using before. You know, Newton, kilogram, meter. I don't think my intent was ever to make you convert something. Alrighty then. I think you guys are ready for this. You're going to do well. Have a good weekend. <laughs>